Hey, what's up guys? Alex here again with another Endgame Puzzle, 2nd of June 2021. Let's take a look at this one. It's White's turn to play. 577 people have test tried it and 469 have solved it. Only 20% or less have actually uh, solved this on the first try. So this is kind of evident that uh, this puzzle might be a little challenging to, to actually solve it on the first try. So let's take a look at uh, right now. It's White's turn to play, and let's say we were to assume that you know it's Black's turn now. The danger, of course, obviously would be Black playing H1 and playing consecutively to G1, so that's a swindle. So to kind of try to avoid this uh, swindle effect, we might want to start off with H7 just to ensure we have the G6 disc that provides access to G1 even if black were to play h1 so that could be one you know almost immediate move to consider and of course you probably wouldn't want to play g7 because if you play g7 this entire column g becomes white and thereafter black can then swindle you by playing g1 and h1 consecutively potentially so um, besides that uh, so one option is to try to take a more active approach and to try to prevent yourself from being swindled Another option would then, you know, be to ensure that, uh, you know, you probably have some this along this column. But what happens if we play H7? If we play H7 and say Black were to play, um, take the corner, uh, we could play hit G8 and Black jumps in. Thereafter, we are kind of secured in a sense that we have access to this and we also have one this over here on this diagonal. So even if we play A2, B2, A1, we can still kind of finish up the move that way. Um, so I think one thing is to try to figure out, I think H7 is probably the priority here, but we need to figure out whether is there anything that might be hindering us uh, or would that result in sufficient discount. So let's do a count. We have 13 white discs right now. If we were to play H7, 1, 2, 3, we get 16 in total. Um, so we can start to eliminate uh, H1 because there's no way that black would play h1 right after our h7 and allow us to sweep the entire g column down. So that's out of the question. And black would definitely not respond to play the g1 and give up the corner. So we might need to next look at uh, the other possibility. So it's not likely that after h7, black would follow with g7. So um, I think the most logical option after you play h7 is black to play to uh, H8 to continue to see whether it, it can force the swindle. And of course, if you were to follow up with A2, so let's see, one, two, three, we have th 13 plus three minus one, that's 15 discs left for us. If we were to play A2, we add another uh, five over here, 21, two, and three. So we add 23 white discs over here. Uh, we don't have an immediate access to the corner, so that's a slight concern. If black were to pressurize us with g7, um, so we have 23, uh, black takes g7, minus 1, we lose 1, 22. If we were to take the entire row just to take it to defend this g column, uh, 22 plus 6, 28, uh, 28 plus 1 and 2, 30 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, that would be 34. And we have a swindle over here uh, for black. So that leaves us with 33. So white, black, white, black, white, black, and then we're kind of left with only this move to play. So 33, if we add um, four more, that will be 37. And essentially, black would take this move, A1, and sweep six discs, and that, that leaves us with 31. And finally, black can take one last move to H1. So given that fact, uh, I would say that you know, we can confidently say that H7 is actually a losing move instead of a winning one uh, due to the effect of the swindle or the force swindle thereafter. Um, let's see, yeah, white, black, and regardless of where white plays, if white were to play here first, white, black, white, black would be forced to jump in, there wouldn't be a swindle, so that could be potentially a case. So maybe the sequence that we considered earlier might have been wrong. So let's take a look at H7. H8. So we have 15 discs uh, after the exchange. If we were to play um, G8 thereafter, we would add 5 plus 2 discs. That would give us 22. Uh, 
uh, black jumps in over here, we lose two discs over here, so we, we are left with 20. If we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, that we have 28. 28, um, so white, black, white, black. So actually that's potentially fine, I guess, because if we lose 5 over here when black takes the corner, we gain another, another 5. So as long as we're leading the discount, it's fine. So that was, uh, let's just go back to the count, 15, uh, 20, 22, minus 220, if we have this, we have 28, 28 minus 3, that was 25, 25 plus 4, that's 29, 29, if we were to lose 5 this, we would have 24 left, but we would add back 11, so I would say that we would, we should have about 34 or 35 discs, if we were to play the sequence out, H7, H8, um, G8, and black would jump in, we would have a disc established in this G column to defend the swindle. So I think that should be enough. Let's start off with H7 and give it a try then. So indeed, black takes H8, and we'll jump over here just to protect this uh, first, and also to avoid being uh, forced swindled if black were to play g7. If we were to play a2, then it would be a forced window by black and we might lose the game as a result. So we need to first play uh, g8. If we were to play g7 and give up this entire mini column over here, the g uh, column, and black would still be able to swindle by playing h1 and g1 consecutively. So let's play g8. And then finally over here, we play the a2 and black actually sweeps the entire discs. Uh, so let's just double check we have enough this. We have 26 plus 2, 28. We lose uh, 3 over here. Um, that actually should be enough, I guess. So 25, we add on, and we have 35 this indeed. And so we win with an excellent rating. So that basically means that you've solved it on the first attempt. And hopefully, if you're able to follow the logic I kind of explained on the right, and side you might have you know been able to, to also understand and hopefully you can apply the, this end game concept to your future games. Thank you very much for joining me in this end game puzzle solving and I'll see you at the next end game puzzle. Goodbye.